King James opened up his preseason last night. He played 13 minutes, scored seven points, had six assists, and the Cavs won 17 to 102 win over the Magic. This is what he had to say about his performance after the game. Uh, just continue to, you know, try to be as much a complete player as I can be. You know, and uh, I feel like there's no spot on the floor where I, you know, can't succeed at. You know, and uh, you know, from in the paint, you know, to the perimeter, you know, just kind of continue to expand my game while I can, and. Uh, and go out there and have my team win. And, uh, you know, it was, it was fun to get back out there tonight. Max. Yeah. How long can LeBron stay the best player on the planet? You know, I, I, I said that he's in decline the other day, and I believe he is. But he is falling from such absurd Michael Jordan-esque heights that even in decline, it's still his era. He's still better than everybody else, Stephen A. And he's an Iron Man, too. He doesn't miss playoff games every year going to the finals, win or lose. I mean, that's a lot of extra games, playing in the Olympics some years, the whole thing, all the obligations on him, and yet he plays in almost every game. When he needs a little rest in the regular season, he takes it, but he's always ready for the playoffs. At this rate of decline, you don't even say, I see decline here physically. At this rate of decline, I, I don't know if you can really say much more than three years out. How do you really predict more than three years out, let's say? But I don't see where anyone overtakes him in the next three years. He's not that much older than KD or Westbrook uh, or, or anyone like that or Steph Curry where I see them ever catching him. I'm reminded to go use it, you know, when Jose Reyes was coming up at shortstop with the Mets and Derek Jeter was with the Yankees. The whole question is, when's Reyes going to get better than Jeter? And sure, at the very end, when Jeter couldn't play anymore, he was. But basically, the answer was never. Until uh, the year before Jeter retired, he was always better. Like, you know, as good as Reyes was, Jeter's just a better player. Um, and I think this is the thing with LeBron. As good as Westbrook, Durant, and others, and Steph can be, I don't ever see them being better than LeBron James declining at this tiny little rate. His skills are so broad-based that he can evolve into a different even kind of player as he gets older and still be elite. The name I look to, the guy I look to that maybe could overtake him three or four years from now is Carl Anthony Towns, who in this NBA can do everything. Close out on shooters, switch on guys defensively, play the post, play defense in the post, shoot the three, uh, uh, score down low, grab rebounds, pass the ball. Maybe Carl Anthony Towns in three or four years. Otherwise, I think the answer to how long LeBron could be the best in the game is as long as he wants. <sighs> I think you're wrong. Let me say this. LeBron James, to me, definitely is the best player in the world. Couple of years or whatever. Could even be three, like you said, with one exception. If the Golden State Warriors win the championship, the person that can overtake him is Kevin Durant. When you look at Kevin Durant, what do we have? What's his, big, uh, what's his biggest Achilles heel in the eyes of those watching him? Nobody questions his skill set. Nobody questions how surreal he is. We all universally recognize that Kevin Durant is one of the top three players on the planet. The kryptonite is LeBron. I matter of fact, yeah. I know some cats covering the NBA that believe that's why he didn't go to the East. Because he didn't want to go up against LeBron. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not, but that's what they've said to me. So what I'm saying to you is that if he goes out west and they win and he's one of the pivotal reasons why and there's no reason to believe that he won't be, then all of a sudden we're going to have to look at him differently because even though he went to Golden State and rode the coattails of an already championship squad, the bottom line is if he's a pivotal component in it all, we're going to have to look at him because his skill set along with his, his averages are going to come into play. The one, when you bring up Carl Anthony Towns, boy, was I wrong about him. I thought he would be good. I didn't have any idea he would yeah. be this good. Sick. As far as I'm concerned, John Calipari hit him, okay, which John Calipari laughs at me about all the time because he did hide him, okay? But Carl Anthony Towns is special. But I'm not giving him the edge over Anthony Davis. Anthony well, Davis I'm was hurt last up. year. Mm -hmm. He was hurt last year. It doesn't count. He was hurt. This in and, and, and New Orleans right now, and I like Alvin Gentry as a person, exceptional basketball mind, did a great job as a lead assistant in Golden State. He's not getting that love 
from 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 some of his contemporaries on the NBA level right now. I don't know whether it's uh, ingratiating himself with players, not ingratiating himself well enough, whatever. But I respect Alvin Gentry, and I like him. But the point is, that roster that he thought he was going to have, it hasn't improved. He's got to rely on Anthony Davis, who has very little help. But if Anthony Davis got some help you for what lot. he brings to the table, yep. Anthony Davis can be that dude. I want to respond to three different things you just said. Sure. Okay. One, KD going to uh, the Warriors, in fact, was tacit acknowledgement, meaning unspoken acknowledgement, that LeBron James is too good for everybody else. That's what that was. The Warriors seeking KD, of course, you're always trying to get better. But as stacked as the Warriors are, they look at LeBron, they go, if he has any help at all, he's just too much. KD looks at LeBron and goes, not that guy. Can't do it. I need to go join the best team in the league to put to, to give us a shot. They're not necessarily a lock to beat Cleveland, but to give us a good shot against way, Cleveland. By the way, he's wrong. I want to say for the record, yeah. had KD gone to New York with Melo? Nothing against LeBron. They got no wins let, against LeBron. Let me tell you something right now. If KD and Melo were together, they could take LeBron. Well, okay. They could have taken Not LeBron. a chance. I, I, don't think, yes. I don't think they have a L shot. Yes. But okay. Hey, wait, yes. But hold on, hold on. That's <laughs> one. That's one. Two. I don't think KD's ever going to be perceived that way, even if they win 80 games in the, in the regular season, 80 and 2 and win the championship, because he will be, in terms of statistical analysis, he'll be sharing numbers with Steph and Clay. Clay, in fact, is the guy, when you look at the sets the Warriors want to run, Clay is the one who's designed to get the least defensive attention. He's going to get numbers. Steph's going to get Still numbers. Wrong. That's going to lower the averages. I'm not saying I'm not saying KD's not going to put up big numbers, but it ain't going to be Still 28 wrong. points a game. Okay, we'll see. Still wrong. Three, Anthony Davis. Yeah. If you took injury history out of it, yes. Anthony Davis would be even better than Carl Anthony Towns. He's performed at an incredibly high level in the NBA, but the guy is a lock to miss 20 games a season. He misses too many games. He's injury prone. We've seen that so far. And he came into the league needing to learn to stretch it out to shoot the three. Carl Anthony Towns came into the league. They made sure in college he came into the league being able to shoot from downtown. So, in fact, to best take advantage of the modern NBA, it was Carl Anthony Towns, who, though I agree, not as talented as Anthony Davis, but given, his, given Anthony Davis's injury history and Carl Anthony Towns' already formed skill set, I think, in fact, Carl Anthony Towns is the safer bet. And by the way, we didn't mention Chris Stapp's Porzingis, who's seven foot three. Well, well, listen, and in a couple listen, of years, well, well, the well, East well, is just going to have to game plan around him. in a couple of years him. with that. Don't mention him now. I mean, not when you got Anthony Davis and Carl. No, don't do that. And then not only that, when right. you think about Anthony Davis, he only missed about 20 games the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, each. A, I'm just saying. But that's a lot of those times, they take some games off during the Trust me on this. They take games off even when they're not injured. So let's keep that in mind. Last point. When you sit up there and you talk about Kevin Durant and his stats, you know why the stats don't mean anything when it comes to Kevin Durant's, no matter how much his numbers will drop? Because he spent nine years proving what he can do offensively. So now you're stepping back because of the system and the personnel. It's not a matter. No one questions what he can do offensively. You would be right. If Kevin Durant didn't have a career 27.4 point game average. He's also joining a 73-win team. I'm, I'm just How much saying, credit is he going to get for I'm that? I'm just saying he's already proven what he can do. So anything he does to step back, sort of like what you say about Bosh. Remember, Bosh comes from Toronto to Miami. He steps People back. People killed him back. for that. But they were wrong. Right. I agree they'll they be wrong, wrong, but, they they, wrong. but that's the some perception. Some days we agree on things. Today is not one of those days. And also, some of the stats picks the Cardinals to go to the Super Bowl. I don't know who that could be. They're not looking so hot this season, so it's me, Stephen A. Don't worry, not accusing you of that. And tonight, it could get worse as Carson Palmer will be out with a concussion. Can they overcome it? After suffering a concussion in Sunday's game against the Rams, Carson Palmer has been ruled out tonight against the 49ers. Drew Stanton will start in his place. Since 1990, teams that have started the season 1-4 and four have made the playoffs 8% of the time, including two teams last season. Stephen A., would you call this a must-win for the Cardinals tonight? I would. I would because of the NFL season, because of 
the success rate of those who start one and four, like you said, 8%, and more importantly, because of the way they've looked, Max. I mean, they're not going to have Carson Palmer tonight. He's going through the percussion protocol. He's not going to play. Drew Stanton is your guy. Good luck with that, even though he is playing against Blaine Gabbard. Uh, in the end, what it comes down to, I'm just looking at their schedule. After this, they've got the Jets coming up in Seattle, both home games, but chances are they'll lose at least one of them. They've got a road game to revisit the NFC Championship game against Carolina, who's now in desperate straits, and I think they'll be ready for that game. You've got San Francisco again. Then you've got road games at Minnesota and at Atlanta before playing at home against Washington. And then you close out the season with Miami, New Orleans, Seattle, and Los Angeles. I mean, those are potential losses there. And I think that, you know, they could play, they could find themselves in a situation where after this, if they lose and they're one and four, they could go 500 the rest of the way, or six and five over their last 11 games. Well, where that's going to leave them? That's going to leave them with a seven and nine season. That's not going to get it done. So I think the level of urgency has has definitely touched them. You're hearing Bruce Arians talk about how the team needs to improve, needs to get better. The general manager is saying the same thing. Defensively, they rank 11th, uh, but 20th against the run. Their offense is 15th with the rush. They don't seem to be themselves. They seem to be a shell of themselves, and the luster has basically dimmed when it comes to Bruce Arians. They need to win the night. You lose to San Francisco and Chip Kelly, who has proven every week that this college stuff don't work on a pro level. You do this. You lose to San Francisco. It ain't going to get much better for you. Yesterday I was thinking about this game, and I was thinking, you know, yeah, this is a – in week five, like, you, you're going to go one in four – I can't believe it's this early and we're saying this, but it's a must-win game. If they lose, they're not going to make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But then in preparing for this show today, Stephen A., I looked at it more closely, and I have reversed my decision about oh, this. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I do not think this is a must-win game. Not because of anything you identified uh, in terms of the struggles they're having. They are. They lost two offensive linemen in the offseason, particularly at right tackle. They've had a problem. And Carson Palmer, one of the, you know, he's not playing. And the thing about Palmer is he really does need time. When he was coming on like a house on fire early in his career, he's Tom Brady, he's Peyton Manning. He got good protection. As soon as that broke down, Carson Palmer, not so much. He's not the most mobile fellow in the world. At any rate, Drew Stanton's pretty good for a backup, but still is not a starting quarterback. Um, you look at, so, so yes, they're in trouble. If you, lose on the, if you lose to San Francisco, that's a game you really need to win when you start one and three. How do you make the playoffs? Well, I can go over that same schedule, Stephen A., and say I can see where they go eight and four the rest of the way. I mean, Seattle is a tough game, but that's a, you know, divisional rivalry. Carolina's had the same kind of problems that, that the Cardinals have had so far this year. Uh, Atlanta has no defense. Washington's just okay. Miami's not very good. Eight New Orleans, has, New Orleans has no defense. Eight and four puts them at nine and seven. Yes. Now, here's the thing about that. The, okay, the Packers. Let's say the Minnesota Vikings win the division. Packers are a wild card. Mm -hmm. Let's just say. Where's the other wild card going to come from? The NFC East is so great that one of those teams might win 10 games? I don't know that. The two, the, two of them, the two of them are playing pretty well. Fine, but neither. You look at the, AFC, the NFC East, rather. You're not like, boy, one what of those teams is a lock to come out of the South. What about the South? Nothing there. Right What's now? It? Yeah. But what if, what if, what if they lose if to Carolina San Francisco, but Carolina gets going? If Carolina gets going, or that's... Atlanta. By the way, and Carolina's looking at the Cardinals saying the same thing. Like, so, it, I don't... As it's wide open. If, if they're one and four, I can't believe... But if they're one and four, they're still not out of the playoff hunt the way I, things I are think, going. I think one and four essentially seals your fate. Because I think that I'm not going to predict that Carolina is going to continue to fall. I definitely think that Green Bay and Minnesota will make enough noise. And definitely there's a possibility that because of the NFC East being what it is, the way Peterson has turned things around, I mean, they went from the fastest offense with big difference in time of possession to the slowest offense in the league right now. I think them combined with Dallas can make things very interesting. I think Arizona's got to win tonight. I really do. Well, it wouldn't hurt. It's open. Looking forward to it.